So welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health and Sewer Commissioners meeting for January 5th, 2023. Happy New Year, everybody. It is 432 uh, p.m. This is a remote meeting on Zoom. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12th. 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law mass general law chapter 30a section 20 until march 31st 2023 meetings are typically broadcast on frontier community access television this is a remote meeting um, if you wanted to dial in the number is um, toll free number is 833-548-0276 the meeting id is 911-604-1580 the passcode is 570012. There's a link on our agenda, uh, which you can find at the Town of Deerfield's website under the calendar for this meeting for the select board. Um, you can click on the Zoom link and then you will join by Zoom. So um, just mute unless you're going to be speaking. Uh, landlines can do that by hitting star six to mute and unmute. So I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we, we Normally we have public comment, we're suspending um, those uh, public comments for purposes of discussion. This was kind of a, a quicker meeting we were putting together. Um, so we'll resume public comment at the next regular meeting. Um, we don't have any scheduled hearings. Uh, we do have discussions. Um, I'm just gonna zip down this fairly quick because we, we really had a couple of items to talk about, which was the authorization to authorize signatory for the Massachusetts Library Building Commission grant contract. Casey, do you want to give just an update of where we're at on that and what you need from us for that and who we're going to appoint? So basically, when you have state contracts, there's usually one person that's designated as the contract manager. Right. And generally, the select board is the authorized signatory for almost all contracts that come through for the town. Right. So in this case, it's a pretty substantial grant. And I went back and forth with the state because originally the contract manager was um, designated as the library director. Right. And in those conversations with the state, they they indicated that often it's somebody in a role in the town hall. So right. when I talked, exactly. when I was going back and forth with them, they were fine with changing the contract manager to me, but they right. said it has to be somebody, it has to be a single person. Right. So the reason I asked you all is because the library is anxious to make sure that the contract is executed. Yep. And so I yep. asked for a short meeting to ask the board if they would designate me as the authorized signatory. It's totally yeah. up to you, but no. this is how it's written right now. I think that makes sense. Um, and, and we could change that in the future if we had to for some reason, right? right. It's not like permanent, but um, but I think since you're here every day and have access to that stuff and you'll notify us and bring us, you know, any information that we need, I feel uh, since we're signing and it's the town, I would feel better having you be the signatory on it. Any thoughts from Tim or Carolyn on that? I'm fine with that. And I actually would make a motion to approve um, Casey as the contract manager. And yeah. um, I will second that. And I definitely agree that it's easier for everyone if it's handled with the administrator who has yeah. ready access to the uh, accountant and right. so forth. Yep, makes perfect sense. So um, great. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, we have a couple other things on the agenda, but I, I think um, uh, Valerie Bird was here to give us an update as well um, on the project she's working on. So welcome, Valerie. Can you unmute? Yep. She's, I think, looking for the button. There. There, there now. <laughs> okay, so I am unmuted. Yep. So um, I was okay. called to do uh, a uh, housing inspection at 357 Greenfield Road, which I did in the middle of November. I wrote my order. I went back um, the middle of these toward the end of December. Most of the violations are corrected. Um, there's nothing in the 410 750 code um, violations deemed to endanger left they're all minor minor issues um there's a couple of minor things but the owner has until january 20th 
to do those repairs. And actually the exterior of the house, I gave him to the middle of, of April due to weather. A lot of the things yeah. you can't do at this time of year, but he's really moving along quite well. Okay. Thank you for that update, Valerie. So yeah. I didn't know if anybody met? had any, any questions. Are you all, you're all set? And, you're and, and when, it, when it's completed, I'll come back and I'll let you know. Okay, your next inspection is January 20th. That's correct? Correct, yes. Okay, great. Uh, no, that, that sounds great. Thank you for the update. We really appreciate it. And okay. yeah, please reach out if you need anything in the meantime. Okay, thank you very much. And um, but, uh, just a matter of fact, Chris accompanied me. Uh, oh, great. Uh, yep, so he's aware of what's going on as well. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you both. Okay. Thank you so much, thank you. Valerie. Yes, I happy really, New Year. really appreciate thank you. you as well. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye bye. Happy New Year. Um, so I'll just go back. I guess back in order. Uh, there was a library design shift for energy conservation. I I just wanted to bring it up because you know we, it was very shocking from the um, you know when the architect said that the energy electric costs to run this building 30 grand a year or something right no it was thirty six thousand. yeah and that was before anybody had any energy price increases you know that was back a few months ago that's more so, than our septic system right <laughs> I mean, so our, our i mean this is a huge operational cost so um i was concerned about that and and it does seem to be that you know tim tim is willing to um be the you know the select board representative on this project and that he's really aware that we need to do a south facing shift of the building and then have solar panels as part of the original cost mm -hmm. you know, we can cut other things but we can't not have energy alternative um kind of things like solar panels to offset those costs because that's operational costs that we can't absorb yeah, and I understood, I think, talking with Casey one day that there was a, um, that I think our OPM was going to kind of work with us to have a discussion about design again. And I mean, because, you know, this was preliminary design and he said, you know, square footage has to stay the same, programs has to stay the same, but there there might be a, an opportunity we can all kind of really look at this again and go, hey, what are we building, you know, right. obviously with a lot of yeah. input from others, but what do you think, Tim? Well, um, we're going to... Uh... The library reached out to um, Casey and Chris, and uh, they're going to be on our agenda next week. Oh, good. They, they want um, not only a select board member, but a finance committee member. Fantastic. Uh, and that finance committee member, you know, if if she's willing, would logically be Julie Chalfant. Yeah. Um, because she's also part of the town building advisory committee, and she's working with uh, Dan Pilot of the LPM on the 1888 building. So. A lot of good things could come about through that collaboration. For but sure. Yep. The architect, um, in meeting with the uh, Connecting Community Initiative uh, core group, um, explained that, yes, they they definitely already know they're going to move it to the side of the building, have, it, have a lot of the roof facing south um, so that there can be solar panels. And then mm -hmm. I think Dan Pilata at the special town meeting did specifically say yes we want to put solar panels on there you know and the, and that will be factored in as part of the cost of the project not not an additional cost so those are all encouraging things yeah sounds good it sounds good um and then there was uh outreach to other libraries funding Have, I, i'm not sure where that it, it, going yeah, where so, new administration and stuff yeah so what i believe casey has You've you've sent the letter that the select board wrote, right? From last year. I mean, yeah. we asked you to to send it to Maura Healy and Kim Driscoll. Yeah. Okay. So the other thing is that um, I'm sitting in on library meetings with all of the twelve libraries that are in, involved in this uh, cost escalation, and there's a meeting on the tenth um, at which we're going to discuss hopefully trying to organize some MMA um, event or gathering of any of the legislators from those affected communities to talk about this. Um, and I believe that Amherst has been having discussions with Mindy Dom and, and Joe Comfort about doing something like this. 
but we are also talking about trying to raise awareness around Capitol Hill. Um, so we'll see what comes out of that conversation and I'll, I'll be able to share that information with you on the 11th. Great. And, but, but everyone is on board to try and keep advocating for additional funding. Right. That's great. I had um, the MMA meeting this afternoon because I'm going to be a panelist on the, when, you know, new members, uh, <laughs> I guess, new members meeting. Um, so <laughs> anyway, um, I know. So we got to organize because I'm now I'm going to speak about it. But yeah. um, one of the things I want to make sure is if we, we are going to have a meeting that we get the MMA involved in that so that they can organize a room for us, you know, per, so next week if if we decide we want to meet in boston with the other communities or with our legislators and the other communities we need to let them know we need a room mm -hmm. um i i know i'd reached out to andy hodgland because i i, I think he's going to be the new um selectman's president and I, oh, I feel like we really need to get our western mass group going well, i know he, trevor you had talked about the franklin county group getting well, the, together. let me just uh let's see on the 9th um at 10 a.m is the western mass conference planning it's the first planning meeting for the western mass conference for the spring so if anybody wants to join that i can um what time is it that's at 10 o'clock it's a zoom meeting i could invite you and um if uh Casey would want to post me? it. Yeah. Well, I don't know if Tim wants to go too, but anyways, I can I'll send um I'll send you invites. I think I can uh like add, add invites. Um yep. Well, it's gonna what? go to your email, uh let's see, to your email, Acorn Hill Farm. So yeah, oh that. that's fine. Yep. And then um you said 10 o'clock. Yes, it's yeah. at 10 o'clock. Um, it might be a good, you know, it's a great, um, Tim, your, uh, your email, I have Ryan Hill, but there's, I know there's an, oh, here it is, the town one. Okay, great. So I've done that. Um, and Casey, I asked Casey to post for 630 on the 9th for this, it's a 350th steering committee, it's Zoom, Chris did it Zoom. Um, uh, just to go over the events for the year, and we have to decide on the parade and the fireworks for sure. So I didn't know if either one of you wanted to come or both of you wanted to come. So I had Chris post it. Okay. Because when, when is that again? Six thirty on the ninth. Okay. So there will have two meetings then, because isn't your um? Aren't you meeting with DOT on that day too, Trevor? I thought that was more towards the end of the month. It's um, the 23rd. Yeah. 23rd. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. For some reason, I was thinking it was the 9th. Okay. Um, yeah, the 23rd is DOT at 11. Yep. And then I think... Um, I, I just feel like I really want Andy... I mean, we got to take advantage of Andy being president. Yeah. Um, and trying to get our groups going out here again because mm -hmm. this whole infrastructure stuff was Suzanne Bump's report we yeah. can't let it go no nope. we, we got to start and we have new new administration so yeah we I mean know. I I feel like the MMA I mean I participate enough so I I feel like they do know who Deerfield is they do but, but they're not advocating for us like, yeah, we can. You know, we, we, they need to. They need direction from us and request. Right, them. So right. Let's do that. So, yeah. So that's what I want Andy to try to focus in some of our well, infrastructure issues out here. Let's focus the. Um, you know, we can try and steer that because we're, we're looking for ideas for the for the planning of the Western Mass Conference. So, yeah, that makes sense to do that, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I think it's a great conference every year, and I think it, it's important to do. And let's get some good good topics and. Help. Well, I think we all have a real beef with it. So what? Let's mm -hmm. let's follow up on it. Yep. And I, and I think we have a. I think we're. Gonna, I think we're going to have some really good luck with Maura Healy because it seems like she is a little bit more aware of us out here. And yeah, and Kim, Kim Driscoll was wonderful. You know, when Tim and I yeah. met with her, she was great. And uh, you know, so I think yeah, I talked to Linda uh, Dunleavy from Furcog last night a little bit, just catching up, and um, 
she's looking forward to kind of developing those relationships with with the administration as well so yeah that's good okay all right um, I, we don't need to belabor it but that's okay. just i just feel like it's really important we try to do something yeah. and i'm going to need some help because this is a paperless uh conference everything is qr codes if we're going to oh, you mean in mma right so oh, okay. when we go like when we go to sign in for the yep. the maya credits for yep. insurance it has to go through the qr codes on our phone okay i so can show you how to do all that i need help just take a picture yeah you just put it on your camera I put on your camera yourself. and aim it there and when it says click this you put your finger on it yeah super easy oh Even my fat fingers it's carol and proof <laughs> oh, oh god this is like i'm getting my maya credits yes <laughs> yes I'm you are and so are we i'm getting credits for the town of deerfield <laughs> well actually that was the conversation i had with chris i'm like we have to go to the east bring the boston yeah. old post cane but and we'll give it to this, you. Is, this is a little bit different too that normally we have about 30 workshops so there's real discussion on who goes to what to make sure we cover everything yes they're only going to have like 18. Oh, okay. That's why it's great that Chris is going with because we can yeah. sort of split it out. We may not hit everything, but the more we can hit, the better off we yeah, are. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad yeah. you're coming, Chris. But we got to make sure we got to look at all the ones that are the Maya credits and make yes. sure that we all cover at yep. least one or two each. Can you guys share what we what's already scheduled? I don't know. Maybe I've already received it or maybe it's in the MMA. No, they haven't sent it out yet. They haven't sent it out oh, yet. Okay. I did see a post today that I liked on Twitter where they were just saying, hey, really excited. So they're just starting to do the the stuff on it. So come out next week. Yeah, because I, I asked the same thing because I started panicking when they said no credits for the Maya unless you go through the QR code. And I said, oh, yeah. my God. So yeah. I, I got to practice this. And um, but they they said next week. And the reason why is because they don't want people uh, getting access until. Yeah. You know, I mean, they don't want random people getting on. So right. they're going to send it to our emails and then you mm -hmm. we have to sign up through it. Yeah. So, but they have, they Casey have something. Oh, I you know, I'm going to go back and look at the notices because we're all signed up um chris don't let me forget so that we can make sure we check next week um uh, yeah i did have a question um so carolyn i might be wrong but did you ask me to schedule a meeting so that you could discuss amongst yourselves what you wanted to do yes two o'clock next tuesday i mean next thursday can you do that trevor we could do it remotely, I guess. Right? Yeah. We were, well, Denise, we were just going to meet at Casey's table. Denise. Oh, okay. And myself. Great. That's fine. Tim, Tim is available. I, if you I'll can try. come, if you can come, it's good. Right. If not, you can if look at our list me in. of stuff. Yeah. It's fine. And just, you can add stuff in. We just wanted to make sure that we're hopefully by next Thursday, this is my, our assumption is that the, all the stuff is out. Yeah, so we can decide. We, we need to organize who we're going to see at the trade show. <clears throat> who, who, you know, what persons? The the number one person in my mind is that um, Lisa, that starts with a K. Yes. Uh, person for the, for the, Linsky, I think the local is. service exactly. person, so that we can get our waiver for the uh, foundation. Um, yeah. Equation money. That's worth probably 400 or so thousand this year. So right. we can't afford not to meet with her. So that's the number one. And then we got to just make other lists. So just think about it, Trevor. I will. It's not will. necessary that you really come, but you just yeah. have to make sure everything that you think of is on that list. Okay. Um, and so, and, and Tim, mostly it's Tim, you just got to come so that we can figure out the library stuff and. Yeah. And also figure out what i need to think about for next year yeah 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 for sure it, it it's our it's it's our list because we actually have you know a good group going then mm -hmm. the other thing is um you know because of covid i'm not really sure you know how we always have you know we always take this as a networking opportunity for our surrounding towns to get together yeah, yeah. i don't know how hard it's going to get be to have, make reservations for 
large groups. So I think we should do some more pre, we should probably do some pre-planning versus let more last yeah. minute. Cause we yeah, might see if, see if Tom is Tom going and yeah, uh, we got to check and see, maybe Casey can just send an email to Jeff and find out Tom usually organizes stuff and then we yeah. can get him to organize stuff. Yeah, just go to now, the you know, in the next week or two, rather than that night, because mm -hmm. I, I don't think we're just if we get too many people like our 15 or 20 people get together, I think we're going to have a really hard time finding reservations. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I just OK, that, people brought that up at the meeting today and I was All like, right. huh, maybe yeah, we should get more that. organized on our. You know yeah. how we're how we're going to organize that too, because we. I mean, that's a key thing for us to go it out. Is. It's through. really great. And and we have Hampshire and Franklin County towns that yeah. we like. We try to go out with Hatfield and right or whoever else is. Yeah, yeah, Bernstein. So, I mean, because we don't usually talk to them very often. So, uh, you know, I hate to have that opportunity lost. Yeah. Okay. That's, I don't know. Sounds like a plan. Um, and and also there's no Saturday meal, you know, Saturday big dinner like they usually do. So that's also a little just bit a Friday fun. night, right? Yeah, just a Friday night. Um, so the last thing I wanted to hit on was I've been working with John uh, Pachurik a little bit on some uh, flooding issues and up on um, in Old Deerfield on the five and ten. So he was um, he's been working with the state and Kevin. And the guys to try and open that up a bit. And I think they met there yesterday. I think maybe even Tim. Tim oh, it's the same. Yeah. went too, uh, right? Yeah. I went there yeah. yesterday morning. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yesterday morning. That's and right. And then, yeah. yeah. And then I think today was something else as well. Oh, they're working with the guy that helped out last time. So I same wanted to. Kind of, yeah. I wanted to get con uh, consensus that if we were going to spend any money, maybe it would come from that. Um, the money that we got from the storm last time. I think there's some money sitting aside to be able to pay for some of that work yes yes i, I, I would agree to that thought do about that formal, do you want a formal motion or not yet you... not yet but i just want to kind of get your temperature is that consensus that we would probably do i mean because we don't have a budget yet or anything like that but that's where we would right. probably pull the funding from and one thing that i sort of recommended i, I know it's uh, you guys are supposed to meet with mass dot is that this week or next week yeah, that's the 23rd, actually. Oh, 23rd. Yeah. Yep. So um, there is a, the problem there is that the culvert is too low. And, and it's and full. Basically, it's full. Um, my recommendation is that MassDOT should be, you should talk to MassDOT about putting an open bottom culvert. Yeah. That's, that, that's very basically that, you know, the road goes right over the culvert. Right. So that it lifts it up two, two or three, two and a half feet at least. Yeah. So that the water can flow at the level it's currently at. Right. What's happened is that it's all silted up. The thing is three or four feet below the roadbed. And, you know, so basically yeah. the only alternative is to constantly dig it out. Right. Uh, which is not practical. Yeah. Because uh, the, uh, the topography has changed. Yeah. Well, the conditions have changed. Yeah. And, and then they hauled away about 25 yards last week and guess what it's all full again yeah there was no, look, no change i mean there's yeah, no there was this much gap yeah. basically between the water the surface of the water and, and the uh, bottom the top yeah. of the culvert yeah and that all backs up into bittersweet and mm -hmm. it's just a complaint constantly so if we can right. open that up and get it to flow across that'd be great and i think that some existing culverts in the back of bittersweet um might have collapsed uh, right so um, I talked yeah. to Kevin Scarborough about possibly, you know, replacing those culverts. They're, they're just like, like round pipe. Yeah. Pipe, yeah. Um, that would allow the water to move properly and then it could, could flow south. Right. And if the culverts are opened up, it could flow through in, and into the, uh, the large uh, reservoir area that's yeah. the wetlands on the farm side. Yep. Yep. That sounds good. Okay, I just wanted to touch base with you guys and let you know that, you know, I know Tim was there too talking with Chief, but just to see what you guys thought about the funding source. So that yeah. well, we 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 had always set aside that money for that general area. Yeah. So yep. I, I mean, it's really great to know that um, the one by Richardson's is still working. It is. So I, it, I, is. it makes sense to spend 
somebody on that same contractor to see right. what can do on that. But it, I have to say, I agree 100% with Tim. It yeah. is the state's culvert. They yeah. need to have that on their replacement schedule. And yeah. I would add that to that list that when you go For to sure. Yeah. Because yeah, we'll, we'll they're not that. maintaining it. That's the problem. No. No. We're, we're, I'm having to call off hours to get it registered in Boston at their work desk mm -hmm. so that the complaint will come back to DOT to clean it out. And that we yeah. can't, we can't be doing that all the time. Right. Yep. Okay. Anything else anybody have? Well, I have to say that I messed up, but I, I am fixing it right now. I had, I went back and I looked and no, I didn't send that letter to uh, Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. So I am. Right, well, pop it again. Good morning today. I'll send it out. Pop it in. Yeah. It's fine. I, yeah. I really, I am sorry. I didn't realize that I hadn't sent it. Sorry. I meant to check oh, with sorry. you last last week, but yeah, the holidays. Um, they just are going into office now. Yeah. yeah. Did they get so, sworn in, or is that happening yes. yet? Yeah. Yes, they did. Yep. I so she's going to adjust it to instead of governor elect, it'll say governor. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it'll I'll sound like we were really on top of our game, you know, <laughs> get them in the first day they're in office. Bang. That's right. <laughs> yep. So well, I make, apologize. Just okay. make sure you CC Joe Comerford and Natalie Blay on it. Yes, for sure. For sure. Please. Yeah, and I think I mentioned Mindy Dom too. So if you want to just give her yeah. a Great. email. And you know, it wouldn't hurt to do Suzanne Whips either. Because she's she's now independent, and um, but she really wants us to be successful with, um, you know, for Orange. Mm -hmm. and, and if we get the money, Orange will revote this. I'm sure they only they only lost it by a handful of votes. Yeah, it wasn't a huge. It wasn't a huge margin at all. Right, and that was a huge amount of money for the town of Orange. Yeah. So, I'm I'm hoping that we can generate enough money to cover the Orange project too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any All other right. business? Entertain no, a motion to thank adjourn. Thank you. I make that motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Thank you. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Deborah McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you all so much. Hey, we, we beat the 30, 30 minute mark. I know, right? Thank By you. 10 seconds. <laughs>